ang dugong gumuhit ng ating kasaysayan. Nang ating pagkatao, ng ating lahi, ay ang dugo ng kabayanihan. Mula sa mga bakas na iniwan ng ating mga ninuno, ating ipinagpapatuloy ang kanilang nasimulan sa mga paraang hinihingi ng anumang palahong. Taglay ang ipinaman ng kagitingan at inspirasyon. Dahil ang apoy na sumiklab ilang siglo na ang nakalilipas ay nabubuhay pa rin sa atin. Magpahanggang ngayon. Okay, ayan po. So, once again, I would like to welcome everyone to our TBL Hub seminar for today. Of course, this is part of our Faculty Development and Empowerment Program. But first and foremost, we would like, from the TBL Hub team, of course, would like to greet everyone a very happy new year. Maligayang maligayang bagong taon po sa lahat. Sige nga po, tingnan nga po natin kung lahat ba tayo na, nandito na. Okay, ang presence natin ay nasa balik yung na. Pwede ko po bang malaman po ano pong mga handa natin nung um, Christmas at nung New Year? Pwede po bang patype na lang po sa ating chat box? Ano po mga naging handa niyo nung Christmas and New Year? Ayan, tingnan nga natin. Hala, mukhang wala na ganda. Siyempre, nandiyan ang spaghetti. Hindi <laughs> mo pa, wala. Meron pa mga mga natira until now. We are now on the 12th day of January. Wow, ang sasarap naman. Talaga naman nakakagutom, no? Ang aga-aga ginagutom ko kayo. Pasensya na po. Ayan, may nakita kong paella. Wow, ang sarap. May lechon belly at kare-kare. Favorite ko kare-kare actually. Nagkare-kare din kami noong New Year. Ayan. So, anyway po, um... Ang sarap naman ng dokmat. Let's show na galing talagang Cebu. Okay. 
So ayun po, once again, we would like to give everyone a very happy new year. We hope that the new year will bring in more blessings, of course, to everyone. And um, ang TBL Hub team po, ay, we are hoping that you had a wonderful celebration in time with your families po during the holiday season. We also hope that everyone um, is feeling better now or feeling healthier this 2022, especially if you got sick during the past couple of weeks po. Of course, we will continue to pray for your healing. Ayan. So now for this time of the day, we would like to welcome you all to the third series of our faculty development and empowerment program here in the technology-based learning hub. Of course, we have been doing this since the start of the first semester, I believe. And now that we have reached, of course, the end of the semester, right? Of course, let's end it with a bang. We are now down to the very last leg of this TBL Hub initiative, okay? Now, um, before we start, Paul, let's first recall what have been done, okay, in the past couple of months and the past couple of weeks, okay? So, um. This is um this is a program that we entitled Empower and Engage. And we divided this program into three different competencies. We entitled it White Cow, Black Cow, and of course, now that we are down to the last part of our series, we have the Purple Cow Initiative. Okay. And of course, White Cow just basically goes with the basic competencies that we have to develop in terms of developing our skills in the use of TBL Hub as our official LMS in the university city of Makati. So during our White Cow Competency Initiative, we had the Moodle Teachers Role Training. We also talked about the different um, ways on how we could engage our students using PowerPoint presentations and um, Google Slides. And we also talked about how we could um, further improve our skills in the use of Google Suite and we talk about as well basic live streaming. And of course, for our for our Black Cow Comp um, Black Cow initiative, this is mostly an intermediate level one. But of course, since we had a good background during our um, white cow competency initiative then definitely this would have been easier for everyone. So during this time, uh, more advanced competency, we talked about advanced Moodle teacher's role. So medyo level up na tayo during this time. We also talked about research, how we could engage our students in conducting research. And we as well, how we could further improve our research skills using quality and quantity research tools. And we also, um, we also had series of workshops on gamification, pro-live streaming, and of course, public speaking. Now, before we, before we parted ways for the holiday season, we started with our Purple Cow Initiative, which of course talks about our um, more advanced or expert competency rather. So during that time, we invited someone to talk about Team Execution Excellence Workshop. And we were also joined by our um, fellow UMAC um, employees from the admin. Okay, now um, it's just right that we end, of course, our semester, like what I have mentioned earlier, with a bang. So this time around, we will be talking about how we could use all of those skills and come up with something that would, you know, give us um, probably, how do I say this? Um, an extra source of income and utilizing social media for that one. Okay, so um, with that, I guess, no, um, I don't know if, ayan, so I guess um, before before I call on, okay, before I call on Dr. Ramos, may I just please call on Dr. Um, Endic Santos, the director of the Technology-Based Learning Hub, to please give us his very short introductory remarks. Yes, uh, do you hear me, Ma'am Kat? Yes, sir, loud and clear po. Uh, thank you, uh, Ma'am Kat. Uh, again, uh, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Ang haba-haba na ating ano, no? Ilang mga one month yata tayo na... Narinig ba ako? One month yata tayo na, ano, na, na tenga, no? Tapos parang meron nagte-text sa akin... Every Wednesday, parang nasanay na sila. Ay, 
meron ba tayong ano? <laughs> Di ba? So, yun. Actually, this is my, ano, may one week ng quarantine. So, <laughs> medyo tinamaan po ako ng Omicron. I think this is Omicron kasi medyo mild lang siya. Nagkaroon lang ako ng konting sipon. Tapos, uh, parang, yung typical na umkat nararamdaman makati ang ilong. Tapos, uh, lalamunan. Tapos, mababa siya hanggang lungs. Tapos, uh, medyo, may ano, lumalabas, may nag-expecturate ka ng konting phlegm. Parang ganun yung typical ng influenza. I think the, ano, yung dati, yung flu. Normally, sinasabi ng mga magulang natin, ay ano, it is a life's, ano, uh, nawawala siya, no? uh, self-limiting siya. So, minum ka lang ng ano, maraming tubig, paracetamol, vitamin C, lot of fruit juices, yun lang, ano? hindi na siya pinapansin. Pero ngayon, parang naging ok-ok po tayo. <laughs> Di ba? Actually, this is my second uh, attack ng, ano, ng COVID. Yung last nung April. Yun, medyo matindi ng konti yun compare with uh, this, ano, this time. Parang ito ay uh, parang tipong ano lang eh. Uh, lagnat lang. Eh, hindi, hindi ako ni lagnat eh. Yung parang feeling mo lang na gusto mo lang humiga. Tapos uh, masakit ng konti yung ulo. Tapos yun, medyo worried ka kasi yung iniisip mo, ano kayong susunod dito? Mas malala pa ba? Yun lang yung medyo yung iniisip mo lang ano tapos uh, if ever na lumala to ready ba yung ano na ambulance or magda-drive ba ako puntang hospital yung ganun iniisip mo yun yung medyo mas mas uh, mas uh, iniisip ko na yung parang future na agad so i think okay na ako ngayon uh, sabi ng sesu maganda po yung everyday ako tinatawagan tinetext ng sesu ng ng Pasig, no? Uh, at yung Marikina, tinatawagan din ako kasi doon ako nagpa-swab din sa Marikina kasi uh, within 8 hours meron ng resulta, no? Tapos, uh, in-endorse ako sa Pasig. Tinatawagan ako kung kamusta na ako, kung okay ba ako. Maganda yung service ng, ano, ng Pasig. Congratulations sa SESU. So, yun yung palaging, ano, at uh, check nila. Ah, uh, 'yon. Ikaw, Ma'am Kat, okay ka ba, Ma'am Kat? <laughs> Ngayon, sir, okay na, pero naka-quarantine pa. <laughs> <laughs> Tinatapos lang Ayun. sa amin, tatapos lang na quarantine. Ayun, ah uh, Siguro nung dati nung araw, Ma'am Kat, ah uh, wala kasi test nung araw yung influenza, wala test. Siguro naandun na to, parang pangkaraniwan, yung ganun. <laughs> Ang masama lang dito, medyo iniisip mo na yun know, medyo ano eh, nag-iisip ka anong mangyayari sa susunod. <laughs> Kasi marami na mamatay. No? Yun lang. Pero still, uh, awa ng Diyos po nung nasa UMAC po ako nung Wednesday, nag-test po yung nakasalamuha ako. Uh, negative naman po sila. Yung, ano, yung nakasalamuha ako. Tapos, ayun, uh, good. Tapos uh, maganda rin ang service natin. Ano? I think the, ano, i- dinidisinfect nila yung area na nagtrabaho tayo. Ang galing ng service natin. So yun, Ma'am Kat, ang, ang aking naranggan. when Well, in, anyway, uh, this, ano, po, this uh, Purple Cow Expert, is com- uh, expert Competency, uh, we choose this, uh, the, especially the hyper-influencer marketing using the Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Kasi majority po ng ating faculty, mayroong some of our faculty using this, ano, nag-TikTok sila, nag, uh, nag-lecture sila sa YouTube. No? Pero hindi siya uh, typical na hyper influencer marketer or hindi nila uh, kinarir yun dun sa part na yun just uh, simply ano yeah, nag-upload lang sila pero hindi hindi yung ganun no yung typical na parang nakikilala merong isang reason why I choose this si, si, kasi may pinapakita sa akin si Professor Stanley na ano uh, hindi siya 
about the history sa TikTok no ginamit niya yung TikTok as a uh, platform in uh, sharing her knowledge on the history of the Philippines is a eh, nalimutan ko yung pangalan ng influencer na yun pero ang ganda ng mga material niya only one minute pero marami ka na matututunan about the Rizal yung Bonifacio sinishare niya yung knowledge niya using the TikTok no uh, kaya an I think it is uh, isang reason then why we choose this topic no uh, kasi ang teacher po ay isa sa maraming materials nakikita natin sa Facebook uh, hindi magaganda yung mga materials nila or hindi tama tama di ba ang teacher kasi sila yung may good materials in sharing their their knowledge no yun ang isang reason then then eventually to encourage the teacher to post wag mahiya po na na to share their their knowledge dun sa sa Facebook or sa ano any platform ng social media ah uh, yun po and of course eventually pag nakilala po yung ating mga teacher eventually the I think the ano, institution, the UMAC will also, ano, uh, will, uh, kumbaga, maano din sa Agos ng, ng ano. Meron mga nakikilala yung UMAC, hindi, hindi in good, ano, no? Uh, hindi ko na mention. Pero napakalakas yung social media because of that uh, news, no? Pero in a good way, kung sana, kung in a good way sana yung mga atin ni Shineshare, for example the yung ating sino yung may school na may oval di ba tayo lang yung ganoon tapos merong indoor basketball volleyball di ba ang ganda ng facilities natin di ba ma'am Kat sa uh, sa kamakita ng uh, Umac na uh, school na merong napakagandang CR di ba sa atin yan tapos may may uh, uh, virtual uh, virtual hospital sa Yumac yan. Meron, di ba? Tayo lang yung meron ganyan. Di ba? Yun. Uh, yun po, Ma'am Kat, the reason why we are include this uh, this uh, social media marketing or social media influencers is to encourage the faculty parang spread their wings, parang parang ating ano yun, yung nakapost yan is a Uh, anong tawag dito yung ibon na yan yung tagak na yan na uh, spread their wings to to see other places to influence other people yun sige yun lang po Ma'am Kat t- take it back Ma'am Kat I think uh, Dr. Ramos nandito na ba kaya Yes po, ayan. So of course, aside from Doc Endex, so may I please call on our, our virtual floor, the concurrent Vice President for Academic Affairs, and of course, our OIC President of the University of Makati, Dr. Alex Sorsi Ramos, to formally open and welcome us in this event. Hi, maganda, maganda. Thank you. Maganda, maganda. Thank you, lahat. Thank you very much, Kat. Uh, Doc Endex, I hope you get well soon on your way to recovery and uh, of course our faculty members here who are joining us pleasant good morning and our uh, guest speaker today maghahatid sa atin ng magandang magandang balita din <laughs> uh, actually yesterday si Doc Endix called me up and asked me if I can give uh, the welcome remarks no uh, being this the last activity of the TBL hub for the this current semester and First of all, I'd like to commend the uh, TBL Hub for all the initiatives that they have done. Uh, sabi ko nga, hindi talaga natin to napaghandaan na, I mean, no one among us here, I guess, would really uh, admit that we pictured ourselves living in a time of a pandemic. No? Lahat tayo nabigla, lahat tayo nagulat, and uh, we were... Uh, really unprepared on really what to do and how to adjust. But from the time that the government declared the lockdown, March uh, 16, 2020, up to today, we have already 
made a lot of uh, improvements, a lot of uh, changes. And this is really the way to move forward. You know? uh, maganda yung binabanggit ni, ni Doc Endix kanina na sinasabi niya na uh, with what happened, it actually taught us to actually appreciate what we have and to look forward on what we can do to become much better. Okay, so dati ang tinitignan lang natin nung nagtuturo tayo dahil nasanay na tayo doon sa usual methodology natin, papasok ka, uh, na-master mo na yung topic mo, kahit pikit mata, pwede mong isulat yung lecture mo doon sa board, kahit pikit mata, pwede kang magsalita, uh, tatapusin mo yung buong uh, period uh, discussing your lessons. Meron ka ng test bank, nakaredy na, and you, you, you use the usual pen and paper type of examination. Hindi mo na pinapalitan yung mga tanong, di ba? Ganun yung ginagawa natin uh, year in and uh, year out because ganun tayo na sana eh. Kaya lang, so, uh, the world has changed and things has changed. And in fact, uh, we should have seen the signs coming you know, very early on and how technology influenced a lot of the changes that is happening in society right now. Diba kahit ngayon sa traffic, bago pa ng pandemic, ang nagko-control na ng ating uh, transportation system on how we navigate traffic is ways. Diba? Ganun yung, 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 yung tinitignan natin. Uh, before the pandemic, uh, kung gusto mong maka-experience na makasakay ng isang SUV o ng isang luxury vehicle, the platform that you use is Grab. But because of the pandemic, even the business model of Grab had to change. Dati, ang concept natin ng Grab is a vehicle hailing application. Ngayon, ang tingin natin sa Grab is padala. Di ba? Hindi ka makalabas. Bubok mo yung Grab para mapadala yung yung orderin mo na gamot, orderin mong pagkain. So, even yung usual na, yung alam natin na nakasanayan na, lahat yan kailangan, you know, we adapt, nagbabago tayo. And this is, you know, maganda yung ginawa na concept ni Doc Endix yung sa TV Alab, transitioning from a white cow to a black cow and now to a purple cow. no Kasi yung white cow... Uh, ano, sabi nga pa, when, when Professor Lopez was still alive diba, he would always tell us na ang baka ay baka ay baka pag tinignan mo yung baka ano bang kulay niya diba? white, brown, black so kahit na ikaw pa yung may pinakamatabang baka kung ang kulay mo ay the same puti, brown uh, or black you will still be an ordinary cow kaso kapag ang kulay ng baka mo naging purple, kakaiba diba, then you will stand out okay uh, you become different. Kaya lang, di ba, kapag nakita ng mga ibang kasama natin, kapag nakita ng mga ibang kasama natin na uh, yung pagiging different natin, yung pagiging purple natin is something that actually attracts a lot of people or gives us influence or maybe in the concept of business uh, registers more sales, Anong gagawin nila? Gagayahin din nila yung pagiging purple natin. ba? So, ang tanong nga noon dati, anong magiging response natin? It's not to make ourselves more purpler or going mas matingkad yung kulay purple natin, but rather reinvent ourselves again and maybe become a green cow, a yellow cow, uh, a blue cow, an orange cow, or a pink cow, or whatsoever, no? Uh, I'm just saying that no, I don't have any political affiliation colors. Uh, but uh, alam niyo po, uh, that is, I think, really the way for us to move forward. No, uh, first is to never stop actually trying to improve ourselves, and once we improve ourselves, actually never stop trying to develop a new ways and to learn things even if it is difficult, even if it is something that, you know, we might think na, oh, wala namang use yan eh. No? Uh, the other day, my my 10-year-old daughter was asking uh, me and her mom, sabi niya, Daddy, Mommy, gawa tayong TikTok video. 
sabi ko, okay, <laughs> sige. Uh, so, now I have to also come up with a TikTok uh, account, no? Because I've never used that TikTok, but uh, this is something that I have to learn. Bakit? Kasi yung mga sudyante natin, uh, especially the younger ones, you give them a device, You know, in a couple of minutes, they can be able to manipulate it and do a lot of things uh, with the device and things that we never imagined that we can even do. So, uh, my wife would give my 10-year-old daughter, you know, she would give her instructions, I'll pay you. You make a recording of this uh, uh, a video of these pictures and uh, you put a song and this is how I want it to be done. And You know, in less than an hour, my, my daughter can be able to do that. Eh, ako nga, hindi ko ako talagang pag, pag-aaralan ko, paiisipin ko pa kung paano pa gagawin yung mga yan. But again, these are the realities of the times. And we've, we've seen how technology, how messaging, uh, and the right messaging, and the, light, the right platform can actually uh, be an exponential way for us to be able to reach others. And uh, I guess this is really a very good start for all of us, a good end for the semester, and a good start looking forward to the upcoming semester ahead. So muli po, no, dito po sa ating mga faculty members na nandito, maraming maraming salamat po for taking the time uh, to be here. Uh, and I know a lot of you are really worried about the virus. Uh, I have been receiving a lot of text messages na, sir, baka pwede namang extend yung deadline ng ano ng encoding ng grades. No, nakikinig naman po yung management, kaya po kahapon, in-extend po natin up to Monday. So actually, this gives you time to be here and to to learn. Kasi I would, I would assume na kung we stick to the deadline, which is I think today, malamang baka less than half lang ang mag-a-attend sa iyo, Doc Endix, no? kasi lahat nagkukumahog na mag-compute ng, lahat magkukumahog na mag-compute ng grades. No? But again, uh, we take this really as an opportunity for all of us to grow, to bond, and to be together even virtually. Uh, and, you know, let us also take this time, no, Uh, if we learn something here, to reach out to our other friends and associates. Tell them and try to convince them na, hey, you know, kaya natin to. Kung ako nga, hirap na hirap din, kaso nagagawa ko ngayon. And be an extension also to lend a helping hand. Uh, I feel, you know, I feel sad when I see posts of our colleagues saying that they feel lonely, they feel sad, uh, that they feel abandoned, that they cannot adjust to what is happening right now. So, uh, Make this also make this learning platform also as an extension for us to be able to reach out to others. So, muli po ang mensahe po parati ng management is for us to stay safe, uh, to do to do our jobs well, and of course that all of us will be protected and uh, we continue to remain professional in all our undertakings. So again, uh, welcome to this. Uh, last of a series of engagements coming from the TBL Hub. And hopefully after this uh, series, may all of us turn purple. No? And uh, if purple is not your color, may all of us you know, transform like butterflies to the colors that you wish that you want to be. So muli po, magandang magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. At uh, sana po mag-enjoy po tayo ngayong umaga nito. Thank you. Ayun, thank you very much po, no, Sir X. I actually completely agree with both um, Dr. Santos and Dr. Ramos, di ba? Um, siguro alam na alam naman natin to talaga na grabe yung influence and hold ng technology, especially social media right now. Tsaka lalo na at this critical point in our society when we are trying to fight misinformation ayan so as as educators na sa atin yon eh ang ang bigat nung nung weight na yon nung burden the actually burden but rather yung responsibility na yon parang nasa atin siya right now and what better way diba to use to use that um that platform right now. So, yan nga po, like what I have mentioned, di ko na patatagalin pa. I'm sure everyone is excited to hear the good news. Okay? So, like what I have mentioned, it is just right 
for us to end this series with a bang. Kaya naman po, we invited a very special guest to join us today. And many of you probably are curious right now, no? So, with that, I, let's just watch this para po mas makilala natin kung sino po ang ating guest speaker for today. Receiving the highest honors among 50 top executives all over the world. He finished the executive program in international management in Stanford University and National University of Singapore. And a certified franchise executive graduate in the Philippine Franchise Association. He holds three professional licenses, a masteral degree and two doctoral degrees in humanities and education. He is currently working on his third doctoral degree. He is the man behind the biggest review center in the Philippines. The Dr. Carl E. Balita Review Center or popularly known as CBRC. It has more than 120 branches spread across the Philippines and other parts of the world, including Asia, Middle East, and Canada, and has the distinction of being the first ISO 9001 2015 certified business of its kind. CBRC dominated the Philippine Franchise Association's Franchise Excellence Awards in 2017 and 2019, winning most of the prestigious awards. It is the leader in innovation for its online review and training today, making its way to becoming a global institution of excellence in knowledge development for lifelong learning. He owns the Mahalta Resort and Convention Center and the Pedagogy Learning Center. He is a film and record producer, a best-selling author, and a Hall of Fame awardee as host of ABS-CBN DZMM's Radio Negosyo for almost two decades now. A fellow of Royal Institute of Entrepreneurs in Singapore. He is a respected and multi-awarded businessman being awarded the Asia CEO Entrepreneur of the Year Circle of Excellence for three consecutive years. An outstanding professional awardee in 2018, Asia Pacific Young Entrepreneur <laughs> Awards finalist, DOSD Science Ambassador, University of Santo Tomas Total Awards recipient, and Oriental Mendoros, the Mahalta Award Entrepreneur. He is the Chairman of Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Quezon City and its current National Chairman for Human Resource Development. An international motivational speaker, a business professor, and more importantly, a family man. The Educational Entrepreneur Extraordinaire, Dr. Carl E. Balita. Hi, good morning everyone. Receiving good morning po sa inyo. Uh, from my uh, little corner in my home to yours, a beautiful uh, morning to everyone. Uh, my morning started, you know, visiting uh, some of the victims of uh, yung sunog dito sa payatas. And uh, this has a point because um, 30 minutes ago, I was somewhere else, but I checked on my Facebook and there are were like 20,000 people who have already been inspired by that little act of kindness that I have today. Yeah, if I may uh, request to remove na the, um, the screen, I'll, I'll, I'll say, yeah, all right. So from my little corner to yours, uh, magandang umaga pong muli sa inyo. Of course, our very good friend, uh, Dr. Endix uh, Santos, Dr. Ramos, maraming salamat po for the opportunity uh, to be with you today. Uh, excited ako ngayong araw na to kasi napakaganda po na pag-uusapan natin. Napaka-appropriate. But let me uh, present to you what I have uh, prepared for you, for all of you today. Shout out po sa ating mga kaibigan sa UMAC. Thank you, ma'am, ma'am, uh, to our host. Salamat po sa inyo. I always start my slides with transformational leadership because this is where I want to connect everything that I do uh, in my life. It's to transform. It's to lead to transform. And uh, today we will talk about a very important topic, which is actually social media, which has a very powerful, exponential, unimaginable, uh, transformative and leadership power. And uh, I mean, the audience may be small, it can be, it can be contained in a small venue in UMAC, but uh, 
the effect of this could just be uh, exponential today. I have, of course, as a teacher and as an educator, uh, uh, the, the topic, by the way, is educators as some social media influencers. Ang tanong na gusto kong ipost sa inyong lahat dito is, has social media taken the role of the teacher in teaching? Okay, uh, is the social media so powerful that it has become more powerful than even parents and even teachers? These are some stimulating questions. Now then, how can parents and how can educators use the power of social media before it takes over the power that we have? Okay, I have prepared some statement of outcomes for the purpose of uh, academic discussion. The first is, I would like to charge our social media potentials. Okay, I'd like to charge this. And at this point, I'd like to pause. I'd like to ask, pwede po bang malaman sa lahat ng participants natin today, pwede po bang pakichat, ilan ang followers ninyo sa Facebook, sa Instagram, sa TikTok, if I may ask. Okay, uh, I just wanna have, have that uh, interaction with you. May I know, ilan na po ang followers ninyo sa Facebook sa ngayon? Let's go Facebook muna. Kasi yan naman ang most commonly used in the Philippines. I'll be waiting. Uh, it has, doesn't have to be exact. And from the last check, okay, uh, Janine has 4,000. Okay, 700 friends. Si Kat, 4,900. Okay, followers, uh, 500. Okay, meron ng 3,000. May 5,000. Si Jerry, Lenny has 2,500. Car Carmela has 4,000 plus 7,000. Okay, okay, Henry, thank you so much. Thank you for your participation. Uh, Carmela has 4,000. Okay, uh, with all modesty, I, my, I, have, uh, I have almost a million. I have about 5 million digital assets that is combining all the social media accounts of my 120 branches. Mine, mine alone directly has about 700, 720,000 uh, on Facebook. And I'll be showing you some of, of this later. I am uh, also challenging everyone to explore the possibility not only of monetizing, because in my outcome, I want to align the educational roles and the social media influencing roles. There has to be some alignment. Why is that alignment necessary? Because we want to revisit social media influencing in the context of social change. We want, I want this outcome, I have prepared for this outcome I want to charge our social media potentials. What, what really can we do to even expand it? How do we align our educational role and our influencing role? We want to revisit the, you know, the, what's happening in social media uh, influencing and find out where is this heading probably. And of course, we want to value social media as teachers, the value of it for social change. Um, I'd like to go back, you know, prior to this pandemic, we were talking about a great disruption and we were afraid of the fourth industrial revolution. I'd like to start with the first industrialization, which focus was, uh, of course, this was because of mechanization, water power, steam power in 1760, somewhere that time period. And the focus of education at the time was the body because the primary skill set necessary was physical skills. 100 years after, a little above 100 years after, okay, the languages of mass production, assembly line, electricity came in, and the science of division of labor came into the picture, and there's more mind now into the body, and the body now is not the machine, but we are now starting to really use machines, and the cognitive skills came in, as a matter of fact, proof to that is that the IQ became something we measured, celebrating the cognitive ability of humans months okay now then after uh, another dec another century passed and came the third revolution this was when uh, computerization the automation the electronics and information technology came into the picture and then we realized that uh, you know mind is not all everything there is but there is something more than that which was emotion you know the uh, the introduction of Goldman's EQ, okay, that became very popular, though he was not the one who invented it. But EQ became a language, I'm sorry, this is 19, uh, 99, uh, 1990 rather than 1912, sorry for the typographical error. And uh, after EQ came AQ, adversity quotient, 
and came SQ, which is the spirituality quotient. And then we begin to be concerned not only of the cognitive skills, but we found it more uh, significant to look into, and that was the soft skills. But in the most recent history that we would remember, okay, the fourth industrial revolution, which is today, now we're talking of languages, we still to some are Greek languages of cyber physical systems, internet of things, you know, robotics, AI and ML. You know, in Singapore, you ask a child what ML is, the child will tell you it's, multi, it's machine learning. But in the Philippines, you ask a child what ML is, even high school or college, they will probably say Mobile Legend. And then in the fourth industrial revolution, we're talking about the value of the spirits and the values. And this is when we introduced the concept of uh, digital skills. In fact, DQ came into our language as early as 2006. So it's a long way back. And there's even a DQ Institute uh, by the United Nations. Now, why am I uh, talking? I mean, why, why did I start it by tracing the fourth, I mean, the, the roots of industrial revolution, bringing it to our time, which is the fourth industrial revolution? Because prior to the pandemic, we were talking about the threat of the fire, the fourth industrial revolution. And then we suddenly realized that we were in the middle of the pandemic and by I don't know if this is part of God's design, but come to think of it, uh, the Industry 4.0 was accelerated by our pandemic experience. I mean, online banking had been here for the longest time, but now we are forced into doing online banking. E-commerce had been here for, for decades, but look at us now. I'm sure, I bet some of you may have had the best purchases for Christmas during the Christmas season through online. I went to the Sunday market, to the bazaar, and I was uh, before, I mean, between, I mean, before Christmas on the 24th. And, you know, the vendors were complaining. Sabi nila, Sir, Sir Carl, mahina ang benta. Uh, palagay ko kasi talagang ang, uh, ang hirap ang tao. And they're blaming the economy. And they're blaming maybe they're afraid to go out and so on and so forth. And I simply told them, excuse me, <laughs> your suke bought already online. And if you have not migrated to the online platform, if you have not adopted into the new business models, ay mapapag-iwanan talaga kayo. And to my surprise, after, you know, I schooled them, I, I it's okay kasi ako dyan sa centuries. And then and before New Year, naku, wala na halos nagtitinda. And when I was looking for them and I, I, I talked to them, where are you? And they said, ay, sir, nag-online kami, humabol kami sa online. And they sold well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking of the digital space. And uh, let me present to you this for the context of education. You know, you know, the, even the UNESCO were telling us the pillars of education in the past, learning to know, learning to do, learning to be, and learning to live together. And they introduced the fifth, learning to change. But you know, the fourth pillars, may the, the, those skills, those competencies uh, were challenged recently. And according to McKinsey, these are the new set of foundational skills that we have to learn ourselves so that we can teach our students because we cannot pour from an empty cup. Look at the first one. Continually adapt to new ways of working and new occupations. You know, UMAC, I trust you, UMAC. I know how trailblazing you had always been in really in education. But you know, the challenge is really there are new jobs coming up. You know, nursing now is like nursing now. Uh, Dr. Santos, nursing now is talking about robotics. You know, pharmacy now is talking about robotics. How, how will robots replace the nurses who will just bring medication by the bedside and using AI and ML and etc. Now, of course, we will not replace. This will not replace nurses. This will just even create more jobs somewhere in the information management systems or in in, in uh, informatics, in, in, in health informatics. Another one is to how do we add value beyond automated systems and intelligent machines? What value can we add up to it? You know, gamification, gamification is what? Is, is now not only a career, but it is even an industry. You know, my daughter who writes for the Business Mirror, she's uh, 22 years old, uh, you wouldn't believe her. Her first article was uh, entitled "Kako Computer Muyan." Dahil sa kako, sa kako Computer Muyan, she tagalized it only to point out 
that those gamers' parents are trying to prevent from gaming are actually earning more than the parents who are preventing them from gaming. Think about it. The language of cryptocurrency is introduced to the young people that their financial literacy is probably getting even higher than our own. Think, think about it. And lastly, according to McKinsey, if there is a set of foundational skills we have to teach our children now, it's how to operate in the digital environment. And teachers, oh my God, I have been teaching in Saudi Arabia for a decade already using the virtual space, but it is only now that my local students are doing it. I mean, if this is face-to-face, -face, would we have Dr. Santos with us? We, he wouldn't be with us, but now he's with us. Everyone is with us. As those people who cho chose to be here are all with us. In fact, to tell you, there are now, you may want to research on this. I'm just putting this. I know it's too word heavy, but I just want to tell you that in the big picture, the 56 deltas across 13 skills group and four categories, there are four categories of new competencies and cognitive it's not about memorizing, it's critical thinking and so on, mental flexibility and so on. Because, you know, I will present both the problems and the opportunities. And the problem is that the social media has reduced the critical thinking abilities of many because we hardly can distinguish the difference between fake news and real news or misinformation and correct information. Because sometimes the fake news are even well, better laid out. Mas maganda yung layout niya, mas visually appealing. And they also know APA. I mean, to fake it, to say that they have a reference to say it. And don't forget, if, there's, if you're not taking, uh, please go to my article in the Business Mirror, look for the science of incompetence. The science of incompetence, I talked about the practical Dunning-Kruger effect. Why are the experts less confident than the stupid. Sorry, excuse my word, excuse my term, but that's how I want to point it out. If you argue with someone who is incompetent, quote unquote stupid, that person appears very confident, more confident than the expert. Why? Because of that Danny Kruger, this is science that explains it. And that's, that's a challenge on the cognitive side. On the interpersonal side, OMG, socialization, we call it social distancing, but socialization is happening now virtually. I can say hi to all of you. You know, I can show you my, what I'm eating for breakfast today. And that's, that's socialization. At one point, I was complaining to my children. I have four kids, and they're all intelligent children. You cannot debate with them, especially in their genre. I told them, look at you. We are here. We're eating. We're dining. And look at all of us. We're holding our phone. So we are not connected to our di dining table. Alam niyo, sagot ng anak ko, Daddy, we have actually expanded our dining table. What? I said, what? Daddy, we have expanded our dining table. Why? I took a picture of our table and all my friends took a picture of their table. And Daddy, there is now a community of about 30 kids sharing the dining table together. Different perspective indeed, right? Different perspective. That's the definition of interpersonal now. But how has it changed? Self-leadership. And you know, social media is all about self-leadership. I want to post something I should be able to lead. Self-aware, this is what I feel. I feel bad. I have a mental health baggage now. I want to post it. And I want, I want myself in control of that. And that's what's happening now in social media. Entrepreneurship. You know, the other day, my wife, I, I, you know, I, I, it was 11 o'clock, almost midnight. And my wife was watching someone in Palawan selling plants. And at that evening, I think my wife spent 10,000 10, pesos buying plants from Palawan. You see, goal achievement. Goals have changed now. In the past, they want to travel. I want to go to Italy. I want to go to Paris. But now they can actually go there right now because there are no platforms that could make you see it the way you'll see it in your eyes. And there is, of course, virtual reality now. You know, the virtual reality that can you actually bring you there. Okay, and you know, this, this Zuckerberg who introduced to us Facebook is introducing now a term which, you know, the, the multiverse, the metaverse, and all of these. And lastly, ladies and gentlemen, digital. But I want to zoom in. 
to these digital competencies we want to talk about before we even talk about social media influencing. I would love to have a UMAC professor as a social media influencer, but of course we will all revolt if that, if that social media influencer will be unethical, if that social media influencer will be showing her, her body parts and or and, and unless unless that's what she wants by choice but there is such a thing as you know digital fluency and digital citizenship aside from digital literacy there is digital learning and there is such a thing as digital collaboration and the most powerful of them all digital ethics that's the difference we can make that is the difference we can make you know in the ocean of this digital space where the good and the bad swim together and the builders and the destroyers swim together in the same ocean. Software use and development is one, but look at understanding digital systems. This is where, you know, this is where um, the language of data literacy comes in. You know, in Dubai, they were taking pictures with me and they even had to ask my permission recorded if they can post my picture. I mean, somebody gets a picture with me, sir, can I have a picture with you? And we took a picture together and he, he, she would even ask me, sir, would you permit me to put this on my social media? I said, of course, I allow you to take my picture. No, sir, because in Dubai, you have a prerogative not to allow anybody to use your, your face because your face is yours. You see, even the name Carl Balita, I had to register in Dubai because I don't own it there. You see, uh, you know, smart systems, the cyber security literacy. Imagine the Comelec being hacked now. The tech translation and enablement. So uh, I, I want to start here because I don't want to remove uh, your context of being teachers, of being educators. If you're talking to just an influencer, maybe that person will just, you know, will just attract you by just presenting to you how much they're earning. Because, you know, you know, there, there is this um, a, uh, social media influencer, Fowler, a lady called Fow with the family name Fowler. She just bought a house, a mansion the other day just by social, me by social media influencing. Okay, so uh, of course we don't want, uh, we, we want to clarify, I want to start it with the roots and the foundation of us being responsible educators because that's what we are here for. All right, now this was how I, just to tell you, this was how I influenced in 2018 and 2019. I feel... I filled up the Philippine arena twice in 2018 and 2019, 30,000 people. And last night, by God's design, I have a proof of the pudding to all of you. Last night, I made a live Facebook video, I mean, broadcast. Ano ang lumalabas sa let? Ano ang dapat mong pag-aralan? It was, look at that Tuesday, that was last night at 7 o'clock in the evening. And look at how much I have reached. I have reached 242,436. I have an engagement of 153,000. And this post of mine is 135 times greater than the average 15 hours of my publishing. And, and it reached so many people that there's no venue on, in the Philippines that could accommodate them. You know, I gave them the same message as I would have given it had I been in the Philippine arena last night. So think about it. Now, tonight I'm doing it for civil service. Tell your friends. And you know, last night I probably earned about 5,000 pesos just from stars that I did not even ask for. And now that it's ongoing, it's being monetized by Facebook, I'll probably earn not less than 10,000, maybe up to 20,000 pesos or even 50 uh, from this video alone, which I did for service, which became even my platform to campaign. And now Facebook is even paying me for it. Think about it. What if I sang a song? 
You know, what if I show them my to- how to cook and so on? Look at this one. I'm also on TikTok. Look at this. The left side is uh, a TikTok video that uh, Rural Rising took when I saw sapote for the first time. Sapote is a fruit. Uh, you know, it looked like uh, chocolate fudge. And if, uh, they put it on my TikTok live. And look at, I reached 2.2 million. And I posted the same video in a different platform, which was Facebook. Look at that. It reached one, what is the number? I cannot see. It's bright here. It's 2.7 million views. And now they're declaring that I am now the Sapote ambassador of the Philippines because now people are beginning to, you know, I did this video because Rural Rising have so much of the Sapote fruit and they have to promote because the farmers are just throwing it away. And nang hinayang sila, Sir Carl, ang sarap nito, ang ganda nito, and many of you will be curious now. And you can just imagine, combine maybe five, five these are different audiences, by the way. A different audience for TikTok, a different audience for, for, ano, for uh, and look at the shares there. I had, uh, uh, it's, it's at 100 plus shares. So uh, now, now people are looking for sapote. Where can we buy sapote? The demand for sapote increase because a little effort that I've done for this, you know, uh, before Christmas, um, I rescued yung makalak na kalabasa sa Nueva Ecija. I, I'm just saying what I'm achieving out of social media, then we will contextualize it more later. Um, merong mga farmers sa, uh, ng kalabasa sa Nueva Ecija, papakawalan ang, papakawalan ang tubig sa, uh, sa dam, mababasa, so kailangan nilang anihin. Pinipressure sila ng mga middlemen, bibilin 2 pesos per kilo ang kalabasa. And uh, uh, ni-rescue namin, so bumili ako ng apat na libong kilo ng kalabasa kaya mga papasko ko sa mga jeepney driver, sa mga communities last Christmas was kalabasa. Then because of that, naalala nyo, nakita nyo sa news yung tinatapon ang, ano, ang carrot sa kalye. Uh, ano sa kanal? Ang dali-dali natin pintasan in social media because we're very judgmental in social media. Ang dali-dali natin ginudge yung mga tao at sinabi natin ang sama ng ugali ng farmer na yan sa halip na ipamigay, tinapol sa kanal ang mga carrots. Pwede naman niyang ipamigay sa mahihirap, ipakain sa hayop and so on. Ang dali natin mag-judge because that's how far our mind can, can, can reach. Ang hindi natin na-realize, yung taong yun nasa bundok, nasa kabilang bundok na para bitbitin lang niya yung, uh, sorry, I'm referring to the kamatis pala, sorry. Para bitbitin niya yung kamatis, sa, sa, sa next community, gagastos siya, wala naman siyang sasakyan. E yung kapitbahay niya, napagbibigyan niya lahat yung may kamatis. So I rescued the carrots, I rescued the kamatis. The kamatis I delivered to, to the Philippine Heart Center, to the National Kidney and Transplant Institute, to PCMC, but could deliver kasi ano, um, yun ang best source of vitamin C that I can give them. Nabibigay ako ng tablets, ng capsule. Pero sabi ko, what could be the best source of vitamin C but real real vegetables? So namigay kami doon. I mean, why am I telling you this story? Because of those little posts that I, that I did that I would have done even if I, I'm not running because I started this in 2014. 2014, ginagawa ko na to. You know, kung hindi ko pinost yun, I would have not influenced. But because of that, Post. Of course, some, some would put malice na nagpapasikat si Carl. Gusto niyang makitang mabait siya, namimigay siya sa nurses. I mean, think that way, fine. But look at my social media. Lahat ng, lahat ng calamities nandun ako. Lahat ng social service ginagawa ko. And the reason why I have grown in social media is because of those. Not because I run, but because, because of those. Now, how did I influence? I had to put it, maybe... I would get votes for it, but my real intention is really to influence. Now, ano yung post ko kaninang umaga doon sa Payatas National High School? And center of my post is not what I donated, which is bigas. No, I did not concentrate on that. Where did I concentrate? Alam niyo, may isang pamilya nagluto ng champurado. Hindi siya nasunugan, ha? Kapitbahay lang siya. Nagluto ng champurado, dala ang champurado, may dalang Alaska pinapakain sa mga nasunugan. May isang ale, nagluto ng lomi, yung isang nagluto ng sopas. Alam nyo ang problema nila ngayon? Kung ano? Ang problema nila ngayon? sa nila dadalin yung tira? Kasi they cooked more. They cooked more than than what was necessary for the evacuees. And why did that happen? Because there was social media 
to tell the goodness, the little act of kindness by these ordinary people that influence and infected the others. Beautiful stories, isn't it? Now look at this. According to the digital news report of Router Institute, the coronavirus has exacerbated the move to a more digital mobile and platform dominated media environment. That's it. That's a fact. Just to put context into it. Okay? I don't have to tell you, but there is a We Are Socials Digital 2021 study that says the Philippines spends the, yeah, the, low, the greatest amount of time online in the world. Nearly 11 hours per day and more than four hours of that is social media. Kaya nga mga kandidato, katakot-takot ngayon ng social media. Yeah. You know, I was offered by Google. I was offered a presentation. Wow, beautiful. I would have reached the entire Philippines for it. But I'll be paying 15 million pesos. Why would I? I wouldn't spend a million for a billboard. You know, I wouldn't spend half million pesos for a 30-second ads in a primetime television show. But that's, what, that's, that's where I'm losing. That's where I'm losing. You know, if you see billboards, by the way, of mine, these are donations of friends. Nagalit, nagalit, pat wala kang billboard. Ayoko, hindi ako gagastos para sa billboard. Sabi niya, eh, kailangan mong pakilala. Maglagay ka ng billboard. Nagugulat ako. May billboard na ako. Paano, may, paano nangyari yan? May nag-donate, sir. But you know what? I'll tell you. Because I rely on social media. And social media could be very, very powerful. Like kayo, ilan, ilan tayo today? Pag, pinag, pag pinost nyo mamaya yung lessons and you quote me later and your friends see it, especially your teachers, I'll probably win 10,000 votes just in this in engagement. And all we're doing is actually social media. Okay? Now, look at this. Uh, let's, have to, let's put a little more context. By the way, I'm an, a very evidence-based lecturer. Okay? I want, I want sources. Social media's news source in the Philippines rose to, by, by statistics, 72%, up to 4 percentage point. It, has been, it, has, it was already high before the pandemic, but it really rose much higher. TikTok okay, grew by 6% of the population being covered by it. 73% uh, joined Facebook. Did you know that there are more Facebook accounts than there are people in the Philippines? Because we, all, we most of us would have several uh, uh, accounts. YouTube grew by 53%. Uh, Facebook Messenger grew by 36%. And Twitter grew by 19%. And uh, by the way, that's a new source. I, I got this information from those uh, from a study on the news standpoint. Okay, now uh, let me put some additional findings of the study. Trust in the news has grown by six percentage point. But look at the forty-four percent of the reports total sample saying they trust most news most of the time. We still trust news. And by the way, that news is coming from social media. Okay, there's a trust gap. Okay, I just want to highlight those in red media, news media, and even avoiding news altogether. Some are avoiding social media already. I have so many friends who are not in social media, not because they're not online, but they just don't like it. They find it very, very noisy. And that's why, pag may ganon, meron din tayong para don. Uh, news that reflect a range of views. Okay, for a while, huh? for a while. Uh, for a while, I just, uh, important lang po, sandali lang. Uh, one minute, one minute. One minute, please. Intermission number. I'm just getting an important call. This must be very important. Sure, po, Doc. No worries. May influence ka na, Ma'am Kat. Yeah. I'm very excited na ako. Kasi <laughs> I'm By the way, abangan nyo, abangan nyo kung paano kikita ng mas marami. Ayan, sir. <laughs> I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel eh. I got, um, ano, um, how many subscribers na? Just this January, 3,000 na. So, oh, good, go good, good, good. Good. <laughs> Alright, let me continue. Let me continue with this. Uh, younger group thinks impartiality may not be appropriate or desirable in some cases, such as social justice. You know what? We have to understand. We have to understand the market. If your target market are these millennials and the Gen Zs and even the Alpha generation, they want diversity. 
you know, there's such a thing as chamber. There's such a thing as bubble. And uh, such, uh, such will be, yeah. Wait, one minute, one minute. Ayan, no? According no. to Sir Manny, inspiration din daw po siya, Dr. Carl, to have a TikTok. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Let's, let's see. Let's see if you belong there, ha? Huh? Okay. I mean, if, if it's worth really doing. Okay, let me just show you some, 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 some insights, no? Marami akong gustong i-present pa sa inyo, kaya lang I just curated it para we can have more interaction and engagement. So, naniniwala pa rin ang tao. But the young people love diversity. You know, most of us would block or disagree with those people who disagree with our perspectives. But the young people want the diverse perspective. As a matter of fact, in my, in my Facebook page, of course, I have administrators there. But I want to say that um, most of the negative comments I had to retain because they elicit interaction. Halimbawa, mayroong umatak sa akin doon. Inatak ako doon, ipagtatanggol ka ng iba, pagtatanggol ka, doon mo mararamdaman that there is really a social interaction. You just cannot put yourself in that chamber, in that echo chamber, in that bubble of the same people who have been, you know, uh, actually following you. Like, for example, I want to be bashed for what I do wrong because that's where I get feedback. Yeah. I want to be criticized because that's how they probably would see me. Like, for example, I, I have not checked my live in Payatas. Maybe my, my detractors will say, oh, nagpapasikat ka na naman dyan. Ang sarap sagutin, no? alam mo, sasagot ko doon. Ipapakita ko sa kanya yung picture na even nung panahon ni Ondoy at lahat ng nasunugan niya ata na pwede kong puntahan na puntahan ko. And that puts more credibility to me. Had it not been for that bashing, I probably would not have the opportunity to even show them what I've done in the past. You see, it's really how you turn it around. Okay, look at this. Uh, yan, ito magandang insight sa mga ibang gusto mag-expand. The use of social media for news remains strong, especially with younger people and those with lower levels of education. Okay, messaging apps like WhatsApp and Telegram have become especially popular in creating the most concern when it comes to spreading misinformation about COVID-19. Okay, uh, the Viber, for example, you can create a community there control it, you know, like-minded people, but you are putting yourself in a bubble. But you know, you walk the street, you just cannot, you cannot choose who's, who should be in that street. Ganun lang naman ang social media. Eh. I, I mean, ayaw mo magkaroon ng comment sa yon tao, eh, but who knows? Diba? Yun lang mga realities niyan. Global concerns about false and misleading information have edged slightly higher this year. And social media users are most, most likely to say they have ex been exposed to COVID misinformation the non-users. Of course. Diba? So, sino ang mas nakasagap ng misinformation yung hindi gumamit? Ah, yung gumam gumagamit ng social media. Yeah? Okay. Now, evolution of social media as teacher. Take note of this. I'm not saying the evolution of social media for educators. No. I'm saying that there is an evolution of social media as a teacher. Let me show you. Imagine social media's main feature is about empowering. Kaya ang ganda-ganda ng theme natin, ng theme natin sa TBL, no? Empower. And how would social media empower? Access, disseminate, create, and share what? Information. In a user-friendly and open space. Now, look at this. Isn't it the role of the teacher? Isn't it that the teacher is there? to empower, and she does that by accessing, by disseminating, by creating, and by sharing information in what should be a user-friendly and open space. And they, don't you realize, ladies and gentlemen, did you just realize that social media is teaching? Think about it. The similarity of the features of social media and the teacher is evident in this slide. And that's why unless teachers and educators become part of social media, the social media will become a teacher 
which will compete with the teachers. And that's why social media is shaping. That in the past, that teachers are shaping the minds and molding the children for the future. Now, social media taking that role of accessing, disseminating, creating, and sharing information to empower in a user-friendly and open space. Think about it. Now, some considerations. Consideration number one, it's very easy. The only cost is time of the end user. Yeah? If you're a teacher in the classroom, there's so much cost. The transportation, you know, the uniform, and so on. And with social media, only, the only cost is time. There are few controls over content. Very few controls. Some countries would have control. You know, when the next president comes in, okay, and my president is his school, uh, there has to be some controls over content. No, in some countries, in China, there is no Facebook. I was there, there was no Facebook. Um, in, in, in Dubai, they have very strong laws on social media use. Yung asabi ko you just cannot use the face of somebody. Okay? And access and manage data. Okay? Even form personal network. They can create their own classroom bigger than yours. Your students are in that network, by the way. Your students are in a different classroom than yours. And they're talking about you. In the past, pag galing sa, galit sa estudyante, susulat lang niya yung sa toilet. Mumurahin ka niya sa toilet. Pag lalaki yan, malamang habang umii yung ibang estudyante, nababasa niya yung pagmumura ng estudyante sa toilet. Ngayon, ipopost niya yan kung kaya niya, kung may lakas siya ng loob. Pero more than that, ngayon kikreate siya ng network. That's, that's how, how easy it is. These are some consideration. In other words, social media has de de uh, democratized the web. There's just so much power of people in that web. Uh, no isang araw, sabi ko nga sa inyo, meron akong uh, leniency on how people react in my social media. Nagagalit ako pag yung admin tinatanggal. Uh, pero no isang araw, meron akong hindi matiis kasi nag lang ako nung araw ng Kiapo. Uh, I thought it was really bad already. So I had to block someone because that someone is uh, belonging to another religion and that someone is like, minumura niya yung Nazareno. And I don't want that during the piyesta ng Nazareno. Ang saloblob ko naman sa kanya. Eh, bakit? Ba't kasi pumunta ka sa Kiapo? Alam mong piyesta ng Kiapo. I mean, virtually, no? Eh, kasi nagkakos siya ng away. At uh, alam mo yun, nagjo-join niya. Religion versus religion ang nangyayari. Sect. I mean, Catholic versus some sect of the Christian group na nag sila doon. So I had to block it. Why? Because that democracy should still be accessed that your right ends when somebody else's right begins. Yung karapatan mo, natatapos sa karapatan ng iba. At huwag niyong kakalimutan, paalala ko lang sa inyo, sa mga magagaling magbash, huwag niyong kakalimutan si Enchong D, humaharap siya sa half billion worth of a case now because of cyberbullying. So, I don't have to, I know, it's, some, it's all over the news. So meron ding, of course, democracy comes with rights and responsibility. Now, um, the most powerful is, of course, Twitter. So may want to explore. It's, it's for the attention span friendly bite-sized content. It's a limited uh, text content. Facebook, user-friendly sharing capabilities. The most, uh, ano ngayon, ang paborito ng mga bata ngayon is Facebook. I mean, natin is Facebook, pero ang bata hindi yan ang paborito nila. YouTube is for visual consumption. There are wonderful contents there like TED Talk. It's, you know, pag nagbabike ako, naka-TED Talk ako and so on. TikTok, it's most loved medium because there are many cuteness there. Pambata, pinasayaw tayo, lahat na ng, ano, and even pornography is, you know, is, is here. You know, YouTube and TikTok and so on. And uh, Instagram, it's the most visual of them all. You know, it's, but you know, there is, I, I've written an article, you might want to also look into an article I wrote in Business Mirror. Uh, I used to write weekly articles in Business Mirror. It's one of the most read articles uh, of, of our class, of the educated and the uh, reader class. I wrote an article about, uh, you know, how the social media could, is actually destroying the way we think. 
and the way we make judgment and and uh, that makes it dangerous no uh, and and how is it becoming a lens that could affect even our mental health halimbawa kung araw-araw ko kumakain sa five star hotel malamang hindi mo na pinopost yan pero pag first time mong kumain sa isang maliit sa isang restaurant ipopost mo yan so pag pinost mo yan yung mga followers mo nakita niya na wow kumakain siya dito ako ang kinakain ko ito so the person who's viewing from me, from through your lens uh, develops that inget and negative emotion about the her her or his current situation that's where mental health issue is now becoming uh, you know more severe you know i don't think mental health issue is only an issue because of the pandemic but i think it is exacerbated by our social media okay while it offers an outlet it also offers a lot of stress no uh, and if the, for those who would like to escape too much visualization you may want to go podcast uh, chinkitan and i had the podcast one of the most heard daw as of last night i want to confirm parang nag viral daw kami sa podcast because he interviewed me in the early part of the year about financial literacy and it was very practical about about what i said and then a lot of people were quoting it in twitter hindi ko pa nga narinig pero maganda siya kasi ang podcast habang nagbabay ka, habang papaantok ka, habang naglalaba ka, hindi siya visual, it's really just auditory. So, look at your uh, assets now. I want to challenge everyone, what are your assets? Okay? Now, teachers as great social influencers, we have our own flair, you know, our personalities. We have a captured market. Um, you may actually engage your your parents. You can create, you can even attract the parents in that social media account so that the parents become part of that community. You know, it takes a village to raise a child. Don't engage everyone in that village to raise a child. Of course, our ability to communicate is, is, is premium. No? Authority. You know, when a teacher is there, an authority. Natutuwa ako pag nagka-campaign kami nila isko. Nung pwede pa kami lumabas, na lumalabas kami. Uh, kinagugulat nila, paano ko napapatahimik ang isang libong tao at sasabihin ko sabay-sabay silang tatahimik, sabay-sabay silang mag-iingat. Tuwan-tuwa, hanapin niyo yung video ko sa somewhere in Iloilo na sobrang ingay ng mga tao because it's in a, ba in a barangay hall. At pag nung tinaas ko ang kamay kong ganyan, sabi ko, pag ginanyan ko yung kamay ko, ilalakas na ng todo-todo. Pero pag sinara ko, sabay-sabay silang titigil, ay nagawa ko yun. Eh, nung nagsalita si Samira at saka si Jopet, halos walang nakikinig. O sabi niya, paano mo nagawa yun? Because sabi ko, I have mastered the authority of becoming a of, of being a teacher and in social media you can you can access that the role to play a social as change agent this is the reason why we're encouraging teachers to be social to be a change agents ang problema is uh, anybody now can come out and say i'll teach you this at ang references niya could just be you know one one reference alone is not enough you know that Okay? Um, maniwala kayo, merong isang nag-viral na social influencer. Ang topic niya ay, eh, ano eh, uh, ang topic niya ay eh, the Carl Method. Wow. Because the Carl Method, I mean, I invented it for testmanship. And then, uh, natuwa ako kasi <laughs> nung pinakinggan ko yung buong video niya, one and a half hours siya nagturo ng Carl Method, hindi niya nabanggit kung kanino galing yung Carl Method. You know? Uh, may, may mga ganong issues of ethics. So I had to message him and said, Thank you very much in, in the post. Thank you very much for propagating my Carl method to many people. And uh, I wish you good luck in your social. Hiyang hiya siya. Then he called me and sabi niya, Sir, gusto niyo po bang i-down ko yung aking video? Sabi ko, no. Sayang, nagmo-monetize na yamo siya. Sabi ko, just next time, be responsible uh, to give citation to the source. Because you're a teacher. Pero how many people would know that? Tell me, how many Filipinos are in social media and no ethics. Sige. How many people are intelligent enough to create positive change among our audience, especially the market that, there's, that they're, 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 they are in? Think about it. And that's why the challenge now is, media, I mean, educators should be in social media. Look at this. Willie Ong has 70 million followers. Okay. If, if you're watching Willie Ong, marami siyang challenge ngayon sa mga local governments. Ito po, paalala ko sa lahat, ha? ayoko maging KJ. <clears throat> Pero yung, pong nakikita natin, yung nakikita po natin cases ngayon, NCR pa lang po yun, 
At huwag niyo pong sabihin yung mga probinsya, hindi natin makukapture yon Ay, hindi ma-infect yun. No? The 30 plus thousand the other day excludes, I mean, has not hit the, the outside NCR and has not um, mm -hmm. included those who have self-tested and did not declare anymore. So, yun ang worry ko. And if you listen to Dr. Willie Ong, two months ago, sinasabi na namin niya sa sorti namin. Sinasabi niya, oh, may paparating na Omicron, tinamaan ng Africa, tinamaan ng Europa, tinamaan ng Amerika. It's a matter of time. Dadating sa atin yan. Dapat ihanda natin. Kaya advice ng advice kay Isko Moreno. Oh, sabi niya, influencer siya eh. Advice ng advice kay Isko Moreno. Oh, bili na tayo ng to, kung ano-ano. Enough na yan to, to silimisubab. Kung mga pangalan na. <laughs> ang dami, ang hirap ipronounce ang pangalan. Nurse na ako, ang hirap pong ipronounce. Ang dami. Napakadaming mga gamot. Kasasabi niya nung kasasabi niya. And because of his social influence, now local governments are calling him. How do we order that? Where do we find that? And that's, that's the value he got for being a, a social media <coughs> influencer. <coughs> And by the way, with 17 million followers, you can imagine how much he's earning. Of course, uh, another doctor, 2.1 million. Si Laika Maravilla. Kaya nagtuturo ng civil service. Ang ganda ng ang ganda ng influence siya kasi ang ganda niya magsalita. No? Ang ganda ng kanyang diction. And a lot of students are learning from her. Yan, Chinky Tan, financial advising. Lahat ng platform, nandun si Chinky. Uh, ito daw, si Number Bender, hindi ko siya kilala pero nasabi lang sa akin, hindi siya daw yung nagtuturo kung paano isisimplify ang math. Ayan, si Ivan de Guzman. Uh, Cara David, nagtuturo siya sa tamang pananagalog. Uh, si Winston, Kili, Doc Kili. Ito naman yung mga practical tips in health at siya yung nagtuturo ng review sa ng medical review. Okay, the great challengers before we go to to how because I I don't want to leave you without the how. The great challengers are the disinformation, the misinformation and the mal information. These are all different things. Depending on the intention, okay, depending on the purpose and depending on the impact and the effect. Okay, some are intentional misinformation. Some are malinformation wrongly, wrongly communicated. Like the anti-vax. Yeah, the anti-vax. Uh, nung isang araw, part ako ng isang uh, Viber group, Viber community. Tahimik ako doon kasi kandidato din yung isang, yung nag-create ng Viber group na yon. Ang lalaking tao nandun, mga former secretary, mga local government officials, and so on. Nag-aaway yung isang former secretary at saka yung isang doktor. Kasi yung isang former secretary, nag-post siya ng anti-vax. Ito namang doktor, kinontra siya. Sabi ng isang doktor, eh kasi hindi ganyan ang evidence-based practice. Eh sumagot ito, sabi niya, hindi pa ba ebidensya ang tawag mo dyan, research yan. Ang sagot ng isa, hindi lang yan because the doctor expertise should come into the picture. And so on. Ang gaaway sila dun, aaway sila. Nakialam na ako, hindi ako makatiis. Alam mo, pinadala ko, the Dunning Kruger. I even had to tell the, the former secretary, your confidence over a, one particular researcher trying to tell us <clears throat> is explained by the Dunning Kruger because the less competent are more confident. And this doctor you're competing with or you're arguing with happens to be an expert and that's why he appears less confident here. And blame it to the Dunning Kruger if you want to question the science that explains your argument. Sabi ko sa kanyang ganon, uh, please blame them, not me. You know, I, I just slap them with, on the face with someone telling them that your little research you're trying to tell us, you know, valid and reliable as it may, is not what evidence-based practice is all about because it cannot discount the expertise of the clinical practitioners you're debating with. And the patient value, the value to the public for whom you are actually arguing with. I mean, arguing for. You see? But you know, the, his intention to put that research is because that research supports his chamber, his echo chamber. And don't forget that there are cognitive biases. And one of the biases is confirmation bias. I mean, read about it. It's in my article again, in Business Mirror. Just research about my articles. You would love my articles. In Business Mirror. If you're intelligent, if you're a reader type, if you want to appreciate well-written articles, please, please visit it. You know, the confirmation bias, you are searching for information that 
actually confirms what you already believe in. You know, and you put yourself in that chamber in the cognitive dissonance, you call it cognitive dissonance, where you want to dissociate with those that actually are against what you are believing. And you will only get all those that you believe in. And this is the danger of social media. The danger of social media is the AI behind it. There is an artificial intelligence behind social media, which will feed you with more information about what you are interested in so that you drown within the context of that information and you will be fed every day of that information, making you strongly believe more in what you believe in and isolating you and dissociating you cognitively with those that are of different perspectives than yours. Pus, pus, minsan, ang misis ko. Dito sa village tami, may nakita ko tumawid na ahas. Tumawid na sawa. From the, from the other side of the, ano, the street, tumatawid yung sawa papunta sa amin. Anong ginawa ng misis? Ay, natakot kami kasi pumasok sa kanal dito sa may harapan ng daan namin. Anong ginawa ng misis ko? Nag-research siya. How to drive away snake at home. Oh, alam mo nangyari? Every day pinapadalhan siya ng snake, snake, snake. To the point na nadidiri na siya kasi takot na takot siya sa snake. Tapos every night, ang bumabangga sa kanya, sa kanyang thread ay puro snake. That's how social media works. And that's why the bandwagon effect, I mean, all of these biases, all of these effects, even, even the cognitive bias called optimism bias. Yeah, it feeds you what you want to confirm and there is, it, it deepens your con confirmation bias. That's why the social media is creating a more biased world rather than a more, the more open to diversity. Reserve your question. I want to interact with you later. And this is a challenge. And this is where educators will come in. We have to stop. We have to take a role in ending disinformation, misinformation, and malinformation, whatever you want to call it, which are, oh, by the way, also information. You know, I'm not saying that the research of that doctor it was wrong. But I'm just saying that that doctor was trapped into that research and that doc I mean, that doctor, sorry, former secretary. I am saying, I'm not saying that the former secretary's research is wrong. He got a nice research. But to him, this confirms what I believed in in the past. And because of that, he already backs his mind into thinking na ito lang yung tama. Kasi may research na ako. Okay? At sarado na yung utak niya sa iba. That's normally how it works. Even in politics, this is how it works. Tignan niyo yung mga political fanatics. Tanungin mo, sinong iboboto mo? May sasagot siya. Tanungin mo kung bakit. Clearly, hindi niya masagot kung bakit. Yeah. Pero bakit? Ayun na nakita ko eh. Sabi daw eh. Saan mo nakita? Sa social media. Ano daw eh? Ganito daw eh. Meron daw ganito eh. Ibibigay daw to eh. Social media yon. And you know, it, it puts us into danger. Kaya unless we become very proactive about it. And as a marketing guy, I'm a marketing guy. Social media is all about marketing. You know, it's all about branding. And that branding is all about consistency. By the way, branding is about consistency. Branding is about Carl. I teach branding, by the way. Those who are in the business, invite me. I'll teach you about branding. I learned from Stanford. No? And I created out of my Stanford experience. I put it as Carl. You clarified the promise. Because if your promise is not clear and expectations are not aligned, you have a problem with branding. Clarify the promise. Actualize the promise. Deliver what you promise. Relationalize the promise. Build that relationship. And level up the promise. Give more. Okay? If you're able to give more, you strengthen the relationship in what you actualize based on the clarity of your promise. So it's clarify your promise. Actualize the promise. Deliver it relationalize, build that relationship. And lastly is level up. You have to level up the promise. You have to over-deliver, under-promise and over-deliver. Okay, so that's branding. So as a social influencer, you should have a brand. You see? Now, experience. Marketing, di ba yung five Ps natin dati? Yung market mix, that's old books. Old books na yan, it's all about experience. You know, it has broken, I mean, it has removed all the other, it has debunked. You know, the experience became so powerful that it has debunked many 
rules of marketing in the past and it's all about value. As a matter of fact, it's not about price. My daughter last night texted me and said, and when she saw my engagement in social media, sabi niya, pinopoint out niya kasi sa akin lagi, Daddy, see? See how, how far-reaching your reach could be if you give value to your audience. Because her advisory has always been, Daddy, give more. And by giving more, you will get more. Yun lagi niya sinasabi sa akin. Because, you know, the social, ito, na master na ng bata ang social media. Eh. This is their masterpiece. This is their creation. Okay? So, if the marketing is all about this, I have some tips on social media influencing. Okay, please take note of this. Number one, define your brand. Define your brand. Pansinin nyo, merong yung pinakang malaki sa mundo na nasa TikTok or nasa Facebook, yung block na hindi siya nagsalita ever. Yung titingnan lang niya kung paano pinahihirapan ng mga tao. Yung, uh, I forgot his, his name. Maybe you can encode it. Yung gagano lang siya. Wala siyang sinasabi. Grabe, ang yaman nun. But what that was his brand. Like Mr. Bean. You know, Mr. Bean is a brand. He's not that stupid guy. So one of the most intelligent actor you can find. You know? But it's the brand. Your audience. Who do you want to target? It's all about targeting also a particular audience. In my case, by the way, uh, you may ask me, bakit Carl, but hindi million-million ang followers mo? I could have done it. But you know, before the election, uh, I mean, before the filing of uh, my certificate of candidacy, I was still with ABS-CBN. I was part of a 20-year-old show, uh, Teleradio. Ang, ang katwiran ko noon, nung nasa DZMM ako, ang katwiran ko noon, hindi ko kailangan ng social media because I have a platform that assures me of a million listeners all the time. Because at any given time you speak in DZMM, you have a one million audience. That's guaranteed. Eh, sabi ko, I have a million. Why will I bother recreate and reinvent myself elsewhere? Medyo hindi ako naging... Kasi wala naman sa plano ko kasi tumakbo. If I'm not running now, I would still be with Teleradio. Kinukuha ko ng ibang network, but I, I have, uh, you know, I have that... Uh, commitment with ABS-CBN. So my, your audience have to define it, your message. There has to be some consistency. Remember, branding is all about consistency. What is your message? That, that um, you know, that, that guy on math, you call, you call him number bender, ang message lang niya is all about math. Pagturo mo ng English, palpak yun. Si Laika, kaya maganda siyang magturo kasi tuturo lang niya yung difference ng in on at. Pero napakaganda ng kanyang pronunciation. Pero hindi siya yung magno ah. Hindi siya yung magno na DDS na maganda rin magsalita. But that's her personality. Ngayon kay Marcos, meron yung, ano, yung si Maharlika. Miss Maharlika, nakakarakter sa at namataas ang kilay na medyo supladita. Yung senyora. Yung senyora, ano, imagine niyo ano, yung billboard sa EDSA. No? And all of those. Your channel. What's your channel? It could be podcast. Kung maganda ang boses mo, gusto mo mag-record, you have a market in the podcast. Kung maganda ang accent mo, at maganda, I mean, you know, it, it all depends on you. And of course, your feedback. You have to be mindful of the feedback. How are they taking it? Like for example, in my campaign, uh, in, the, in the past, hindi ka kasi pwedeng hindi evidence-based eh. So what I did in the past is, uh, okay, may nagpa-survey ako. Kung hindi ako kilala, may babasahin sa kanya. Pagkatapos basahin, tatanungin kung iboboto ako. At pag sinabing oo, tatanong bakit mo iboboto? Ano ang narinig mo sa sinabi ko na dahilan para iboto mo siya? Kaya alam ko ngayon na malaking bagay pala sa mga botante yung, yung credibility mo, yung credentials mo. Ang na, nakasyak sa kanila, tatlo ang professional licenses ko, dalawang doctoral degree ko. Naalala pala yun kahit ng masa. Ang masa na wow. Sabi ng masa wow. Tatlo lisensya. Ako nga ni Kalahati, wala ako. <laughs> Parang ganun. So, and those feed, feedback became very important. With, with social media. And if you're mindful, if you're mindful of your feedback, I'll tell you, you would know how to navigate it and capitalize it. Para ka nag-SWOT analysis. How you capitalize on your strengths. Kagaya kagabi, nag-viral, I mean, almost 200,000 nanood sa akin for, for that video uh, that I did live. Mamayang hapon, mamayang gabi, meron naman ako so, uh, civil service. Bukas siguro, nasa nursing ako. Pero alam nyo, napansin ko yung mga tao tuwan-tuwa pag ang ginagawa ko, ordinaryong bagay. Halimbawa, nung isang araw, nagluto ako ng lomi. Abay, nag-viral eh. Nagluto ako ng lomi. Nagluto ako ng itlog kahapon ng mga 20,000 ang nanood. Ako, kakatuwa talaga yung mga tao. But, you know, you, you learn from there. The impact. Ako sa akin, mahalaga to. The impact. 
parang ano yan, parang ako nag-evaluate ka ng training. Remember the Kirkpatrick level of evaluation? Huwag lang lagi yung impact, pero may gusto ako makita eh. Ano yung change? And, uh, and your ethics. These are my tips to you. You know, if, if I want, want to clarify it even further, your brand is you. In social media, it's all about you. It's you, your brand. Uh, your audience, remember your audience is your reason. Your audience is your reason for being. So if you don't have an audience, you're not in social media. So how, if you want to build an audience, then you have to find more reason why they will be with you. Your message becomes your product. So prepare it. Prepare your message well. Like, you know, you would not, um, you may, may want to ask, but I slept 11 o'clock in the evening to fix these slides that I have been doing naman elsewhere. Pero I had to fix it. That's why I had to update my information. Your channel is your stage. Your, your platform, your me social media channel is going to be your stage. So make sure that it's also a beautiful stage. Like as I speak to you now, I can use my, my virtual background. I can put my campaign slogan here, my, my party mates here, my blah, blah. But that's not something I want. That's not my branding. Namigay nga ako kanina ng bigas. Hindi ako namigay. Pinabigay ko sa mga kabataan. Eh. Because that's not my branding. Okay? I don't want... I don't want their misery to be my platform. You know what I mean? It dictates a, lo a lot about you. Okay? Um, your, I mean, your feedback is your lesson. Okay? Your feedback becomes your lesson. You can learn your lessons through them. Ask them, what do you want to learn more from me? What else do you want me to broadcast? Okay? Your impact, your value. Ano naging halaga mo sa tao? How will they remember you? Your ethics is your integrity. You cannot lose your professor title because of a wrong information you've done. But I'm not saying be perfect. I don't, I'm not saying don't have the courage. Uh, I, I'm not saying don't make mistakes. I'm just saying you have to be guided by your North Star, your ethics. You know, I, I, I cannot imagine a UMAC professor, um, you know, but this is, this is still a choice. It can be. It can be. Maybe I'm just judgmental about it. I mean, you know, um, doing TikTok with bulging body parts. Unless that becomes your attraction. Right? Because if you want to sell, if you want to sell, well, like for example, as, as a marketing person, bakit ka nagbebenta ng brief? Bakit pag pumunta, pumunta ka sa mall at nagbebenta ka ng brief, uh, ang nakadisplay ay mga magagandang katawan ng lalaki na mga nakabrief? Eh kasi you may not forget that the one, your audience there is not the husband but the wife. So the wife is imagining the husband in that brief and in that body and that's why that little imagination is there. You know, why, why would uh, Tanduay, for example, sell ads? Of course, this is wrong, but why will they uh, put women in their ads for, for wine? Of course, that's, that's, that's where ethics would come in now. Because that's their target. That's their target market. You see? And uh, this is also true in social media influencing. But the end of it all, if we want change, there are three ways to change. Uh, it change by revolution, which is going to be bloody because it will be resisted. Change by evolution, which will take forever. You know? And, uh, you know, evolution, if we will just watch the social media to evolve in time, and the multiverse and the metaverse coming in soon. You know, na anak nyo ayaw nang pumasok kasi doon na lang siya sa bahay. And maybe we were not part of the change that we want. And finally, change can be transformational. And that's why I included this in my transformational leadership talks where I would always talk about this slide saying that transformation comes from within. So... Uh, that news where that says that Pornhub uh, viewership was, was highest in the Philippines and the Filipinos watch Pornhub longer than any other creatures in the universe. I'm sure you have seen that in the news. And surprisingly, the data revealed that there were women, more women watching it than men. Then, uh, of course... My reaction to that was, 
assuming that it is a valid and a reliable survey done, what's wrong? Why, you know, why discriminate women if they want to watch pornography over men? I mean, pornography was not born from, uh, was not created for men. So why judge women? Why we judge Filipina na malilibog sila na nanonood? But my greater question is how was that survey done? And what's the intention of that survey? Think about it. So it's really about looking at it in a different lens. And that's why I've always loved to talk about educational transformation. And what I uh, discussed about to you today is all, are, are, are all related to, to that. And in, in closing, I would like to say that um, you, know, you have to give your chance, yourself the chance to change. Uh, but that change that you take chance for becomes your choice. Okay, so thank you very much. Marami salamat po. And I would love to answer some of your questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Carl. So ayan po, no? I guess it's now time for us to ask our questions. Sige po, you may type in your questions po on our chat box. And like what Dr. Carl mentioned, he'd be happy to answer all of your questions. Yeah, I would. Um, I'm seeing some comments in the in the in, in the chat space. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, don't ask me about about how much the influencers are earning, ah, because you will not be surprised. Uh, of course, you saw it in the news that they're earning millions monthly. Kaya kahit ano gawin nila, and it's a, it's a career now. You know the the movie stars and the television personalities in the past. I mean, in the past, the TikTokers and the social media influencers wanted to be celebrities. Like the one who invented Bekimon, okay, uh, is, is a teacher. Um, he became, he, start, he started it that even UP used uh, her references as Bekimon as a language of the, of the gay. Now she's a teacher in Mindoro. And uh, she, has, she enjoyed the spotlight of show business somehow. But she's now living a comfortable, simple life in Mindoro as a teacher of, in senior high school. So it's a choice she had to make even if she was in the spotlight before. So it's really all about. Kung tinuloy lang niya yun, baka she is one of the millionaires now earning a lot. Ito po, Dr. Carl, no? Meron po tayong right. question. From Sir Romel Ramos, he hmm. asked um, if he could please elaborate more on how we as teachers could apply evidence-based learning and teaching. All right, um, evidence-based. I teach this in the graduate school, um, and evidence-based concept comes from three so sources that you have to harmonize. Number one is your research evidence. Research research will have to, of course, be based on validity, reliability, look at the methodology, and so on, the sampling, etc. Um, but, you know, for teachers, you know, action research could be very useful already. That's number one element or component. Number two is the expertise, your expertise as a teacher. You know, you cannot discount that. If you have taught so long, you have developed insights and competencies within you. That not, not to negate or not to just support, but to, to strengthen or to enrich because of the evidence. But lastly, what we miss in evidence base is the value that we want to give our learners, our students. So if you're able to harmonize the three, because you know, evidence based teaching is anchored on science, and science is not a static discipline. You know, it's not science in itself it is, if it believes in, you know, in the box. You know, it's, it's like evidence based is like this. It's thinking out of the box from within the box. Imagining that there is no box. You know, it's all, it's, it, these are three statements I make. No? Most of us would just say, think out of the box. But that's not enough. You know, I want to believe that you have to think outside the box from within the box, but believing that there is no box. After all, there is no box. 
So think from within, which is your expertise, which you cannot discount, your reflective learning, that's important as an adult, and think out of the box, is looking at new evidences, new information, new data, okay? And believing that there is no box because you, know, you don't wanna be trapped in the old notion. And the purpose of being comes from coming from within the box. Yeah. Thank you, sir. No. Um, follow up lang po with that, no. Um, sir Romel Ramos would also like to clarify if evidence-based evidence teaching and learning is synonymous with experiential learning. Not synonymous, but uh, it regards it so well. You know, uh, I, I want to start with the reflective learning. Teach this to your students. Reflection. Uh, hindi natin nagagawa yan. You know, even, ano ha, um, uh, given more time, uh, you, you go to Kolb's model of adult learning. Okay. Teka lang, maingay yung mga aso ko. Paki, ma, pakipasaway yung mga aso. Labintatlo po yung aso ko sa bahay. Eh. Pag nagsatahulan, sabay-sabay yan eh. So, the first thing we do is to actually reflect. The second thing you do, uh, as first, experience. Experiential learning. Experience, reflect, theorize, then act. Okay, now I, I want to relate it to what Sir Rommel said. You know, you, you experience, but that's not enough. You reflect upon that experience. Then you make a theory, you theorize, you make a conclusion. And then you, are, you should be willing to act on that experience. So that completes the cycle. And that new experience, that, that action creates a new experience. So that goes in a cycle. But what we're missing more of that most of the time is because the experience is not valued. So it's very, very important that we learn valuing of that experience. Any experience, good or bad, from ordinary and extraordinary people are like the same, but it's about how you value that experience. And this is where most of us lack. We lack the valuing of our experience. And that's why we are not reflective. Now, this is teaching us valuing. This is teaching us thinking. This is teaching us deciding, and this is teaching us acting skill. Because this is where we experiment, you know, sir? So uh, the evidence-based practice is so anchored on, on our adult learning where the experience is valued, where the reflection is using deep thinking, and where theorizing becomes the basis of decision-making and willingness to try that experience into action or experimenting uh, is the acting skill that drives the new experience. So it's, it's really a cycle. Okay, so uh, Rommel, experience, valuing, reflecting, thinking, uh, theorizing, deciding, and experimenting is acting. And that, that creates a cycle. And that will grow you. Ganun po ang bisyo ko. Bisyo ko sa gabi, Bago ako matulog, sabi lang ng misis ko, ang bilis ko daw makatulog. Pero sa totoo lang, pag pubikit ang matakot ako, hindi ako tulog, nagre-rewind ako ng CCTV ng araw ko at itatanong ko sa sarili ko, how will I do it better? In fact, mamayang gabi, part kayo ng CCTV ko. Sasabihin ko, tatanong ko sa sarili ko, in the morning I lectured on this. If I will do it again, how would I do it better? Then I will not be afraid to, to redo, to do it better later. Thank you. Ayan po. Thank you po, Sir Carl. Um, ito, meron po po, tuyo, po, po tayong question dito from Sir Carlo Magno naman, uh, Mar Magno Santrico. His question is, should the social media activities of the teachers be under the permission of the university or the institution they're working for? Yeah, nice, nice. A beautiful question. Beautiful question. Alam niyo dati, bawal ang mobile phone sa classroom. Ngayon, yung mobile phone ang classroom. Think about it. And don't forget, there's such a thing as academic freedom. Uh, but part of academic freedom is freedom, is responsibility, and accountability. Okay, there are rules that govern. And remember, you don't shed off who you are when you are in your communities. You know, even there's a code there is an ethical guidance to becoming a teacher where while you have the freedom to be who you are, 
you are governed by some norms which the university may prescribe. I don't think it's permission that is necessary, but I think it's some, some deepening some deepening of that purpose by which the teacher becomes part of social media. And until such time that um, until that such time that the university can trust the professors and the faculty enough, would there be no because there's nothing, there's no absolute freedom in this universe. You know, the academic freedom, remember, it rests upon the university for choosing what to teach whom to teach and who to teach. Let's not forget that. Therefore, the university has that academic freedom to choose who to teach. Okay? And you are those people who were chosen and given by the, chosen by the university to teach. And therefore, the university has that right. Now, in the classroom, fine. You have the academic freedom to teach your content, to give the grade. You're the only superstar on, the, on that line. But let's not forget that your right ends when somebody else's right begins. So your right, for example, to press freedom is subject to the rights of others for privacy and confidentiality. So that's another thing. So ang ibig ko sabihin ay, I think it's a relationship you have to build rather than permission. What is that relationship? And in a relationship, there are expectations. Maski mag -jowa, no? So you remember, go back to that relationship between the university and that faculty. And if that relationship can be defined, that will settle some issues and will make sure that your, your journey becomes harmonious for each other. Yeah, Build that relation. I don't think there is a need. Uh, permission is not the word. I think it's the relationship that you have to define. Um, my faculty, by the way, huh? my faculty... For example, nung, nung pandemic times, meron sa kanilang mga nagla-live, nag-YouTube-YouTube na. Ang naging katwiran ko lang sa kanila doon is make sure, make sure that when you put everything there, I still have a reason to hire you and pay you per hour to teach my students for a fee. So that was my warning. In other words, kung lahat ng tinuturo mo nandiyan na, sasabihin ko na lang sa estudyante ko balang araw, Oh, mumurahan ko ang tuition fee, panoorin niyo yung, pinan yung palabas doon ni Ma'am Katrin, uh, Ma'am Ma Kay or something. So it's really about relationship. Yeah. Thank you. Ayan, thank you po, sir. No? So, um, ako po, sir, meron akong question. No? Um, like what I have mentioned earlier, I'm trying to grow as well my audience. And mm. yung YouTube channel ko din po kasi it's your lecture and I haven't been like campaigning or posting about it but it grew to 3000 nga po for in a span of a year so hmm. for those who are starting up do you have any practical tips for us yeah look at what you post uh, have a dashboard okay be mindful of the dashboard which of those you post are generating greater views and greater attention and shares what you need are shares and subscription so that's number one. Uh, you have to be very mindful of your dashboard because not everything you put in social media sells. Just like not everything that you see in SM actually sells. Okay? The second thing is consideration to that is not only content. Consideration to that is also time. Which time of the day do you generate most of this attention? Like in my case, my audience um, are, are like, like tonight, uh, my audience are probably working elsewhere. Many of them are mothers or, you know, may trabaho. Kung pag nag-7 o'clock ka nag-post, malakas yun. Okay, pero nung ECQ, maaga pa lang. Okay, pero meron akong ilo-launch ngayon. May lo-launch ako ng uh, 10 o'clock PM. Sino ang target ko? Yung intellectuals kagaya nyo. Okay, intellectuals kagaya nyo. Kasi sabi ko, Yung mga late night show, ang nanonood lang niyan are the intellectuals. Yung mga may maturity, may maturity na. So sabi ko, maglo-launch ako ng uh, late ano, evening, uh, Carl Balita Nightly. That was my word, late nightly. Then my, my daughter, ano, uh, oppose that. Sabi niya, Daddy, for your information, the old people are sleeping at 10 o'clock. It's the young people you have to attract because we sleep at 2 o'clock. So I shifted it. 
So meron akong messaging mga 9 o'clock sa mga older and intelligent. Then 10 o'clock nandun ako sa mga youth. And believe me, gising sila ng alas gis. Ang mga anak nyo, pustahan tayo, alas dos na gising pa. Nagigames. So you have to divert them to you. And we'll talk about mental health, cryptocurrency, mga ganun bagay. Ayan. So thanks, thanks for that. Ayan po, sir. In relation to that as well, na Doc Manny also asked, um, what do you think is the most appealing topic in YouTube or in TikTok, especially for beginners like yeah. Doc Manny po? Alam mo, it depends really about, uh, upon your target. Ngayon, kung may captured market ka na, you have to grow na your base. Uh, halimbawa, wag kang mag-podcast kung ang target mo yung mga senior citizen. Hindi sila pang podcast. Ayun, even your approach are money. No? Your approach is ano eh, sa, uh, different. Kung ang approach mo, kung ano bang personality ang gusto mo project Ako kasi, hindi ako pwedeng magkengkoy. Ang galing kong kumanta, pero ayokong kumanta. Ayoko ma-identify na I'm the singing senator. In fact, binabrand nila akong singing senator. Hello, ayoko maalala ng tao na kumanta lang ako kaya nila ako binoto. O nagbudut sa ako kaya ako binoto. Ayoko nung ganong identity. I want to be, I want to win ka ako by, you know, by my credentials, but by the way I I think and the way I can be part of the solution. So, hindi ako pwedeng magsasayaw. Then there was a time na yung anak ko, nakandredy na yung camera. Daddy, if you love me, you will dance this. O, dinance ko. Ay, sus Mario, sa kinagat sa TikTok. At saka yung platform, sir, sir Manny. Pag ang platform mo TikTok, huwag ka masyadong serious. Kailangan makulit ka rin doon. Ngayon, uh, kung ang audience mo mga bata, uh, even your language, the level of your language. Uh, ako, ang nakikita ko, pag may kinalaman sa academics, finances, yung need ng times. Ngayon, alam nyo ang tao ngayon, takot na takot sila dito sa Omicron. May dadating pang ano, uh, Delta Cron. Oh, hindi natin alam kung kailan dadating si Megatron at saka sila Decepticon, ano mang dadating. Pero no seriously, the Delta Cron, uh, the Delta Cron is something we're afraid of. The Flurona, marami kasing tandaan niyo ito, 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 dalawa pong bagay 'yan sa marketing, 'di ba? Ano bang mas strong? Sige, interact tayo. Ano bang mas powerful, need or want? Oh, Ma'am K, what do you think is more powerful, need or want? Um, ako sir, in terms of Nakikita ko sa social media, parang one. Ay, sa'yo? <laughs> oh, ganito kasi yon. This is what you... Okay, yan. Magsasasagot kay Salamat sa nagsagot. Opo. Alam nyo, powerful. Ano daw mas powerful? Sige nga, interact tayo. Ah, Voltron daw. Oh, ah, sige po, interact with me. Ano mas powerful? Leader one. Okay, ganito po sabihin ko sa inyo. Okay. May, may lalabas. Lalabas yung katulong. Sabihin ko, ay, tata, bili ka ng shampoo. Bakit ko siya papabili ng shampoo? Because I need shampoo. Okay? Pero pag si Tata, nandun na siya sa harapan ng skaparate sa supermarket ng mga shampoo, bakit niya kukunin yung head and shoulders? Not because I need head and shoulders, but because I want head and shoulders. So tandaan po natin, the need is what pushes you to buy but it's the want that makes you choose what to buy. So to me, the most powerful, if you want in social media, is they want you. They want you. Sa totoo lang, bakit niya, ba't, ma, ba't mo follow Not because you need to. You know what? Kung need rin lang, ang daming shampoo. Alam nyo, kung need rin lang, Kung kayong ka mag-uumpisa ng health, Sus Mariose, papantay ka kay Doc Willie Ong, cardiologist yun, internist yun. Gagaling ka pa doon? Gagaling ka pa doon sa Tony Liachon? ba? Kung health ang sayo. Pero kung dadating ka doon at magiging kuwela ka and they want it, malakas yun. Nung isang araw, ano nag-viral sa akin, nagturo akong gumawa ng virgin coconut oil. Is it because they, they need it? Of course, I was offering na you need to learn this because this is antiviral. But you also want it because wala ka nang mabiling gamot. At madali lang ito. Ganun pa. So you have to be both needed and wanted in the end. But what is more powerful is want. So what is it that they want? You know why? Because in the psychology of the sales, when you want something, your mind will look for a valid justification to justify to yourself that you need it. 
sa Tagalog para mas masarap pag-usapan. Pag ang utak natin, gusto natin ng isang bagay, gagawa natin ang paraan na kumbinsi ng sarili natin at ang buong mundo na yung gusto mo ay kailangan mo para mapilitan kang kumbinsi ng sarili mo at mundo na bibilin mo siya. Tama. Yeah, pwede inspirational, pwede light. Depende. Depende sa audience nyo. Halimbawa po, sa business mirror, yung write-up ko sa business mirror, hindi ko naman sinulat yun para sa ordinaryong tao. Kasi alam nyo, ang dami ng tabloid, ang dami ng social media, ang dami ng nagsusulat ako ano-ano lang ang sinusulat, opinion. And you know what? I came from a school. Alam nyo, ito ha. <clears throat> Na-imagine ko ang sarili ko nung nandun ako sa Stanford na 49 kami at ang requirement do, number one, you are an executive for 10 years. Naisip ko actually ang UMAC nun eh. Kung meron may magandang dapat gumawa ng mga executive education program dito, UMAC. Alam mo, President, pag-usapan natin to, no? Baka pwede ako maging director niyan balang araw, mag-apply ako. No? Pagdating ko doon, sabi ko, nung dinner na, nung, break, nung dinner, welcome dinner namin, nung nakilala ko mga kausap ko, kumpanya Google, imagine mo, Pan Pacific director ng Google, classmate ko, ng Intel, malalaking kumpanya, yung Mattel, classmate ko yun. I, I mean, it was so expensive that you will not be able to afford it, number one, if you're a small company or if you're not really investing on lifelong learning. Alam niyo, ang tanong ko sa sarili ko doon, Sus Mario, kasi pag nagsama-sama kami 49 dito, paano na to? Oh. And by the way, I was the only Filipino there and I was the only one from a developing country in that batch, in that cohort. Alam niyo, may rule sila. Ganda ng rule. Ang ganda-ganda ng rule. Rule number one, If you are not an expert on a topic, you're not allowed to speak. If you are not, number two, two na, na second rule, if you are not expert in a topic, you can speak, but you have to cite a reference. O, pagdating namin sa classroom, o, di tahimik kaming lahat. Ba't kami tahimik? Eh, kung manahimik ka, o, hindi ka expert. Kung hindi ka expert, mag-research ka. Uh, kaya ako nakukuha ko spotlight doon kasi I happen to be in you know in development, entrepreneurship, I'm a teacher, you know I'm a health professional. So nakakasalita ako. Pag tumaas ka doon ng kamay, sabi mo, um, may I speak as a? Tatanong ako doon. And boy, social entrepreneur. Doon ako nakakuha ng spotlight. Kaya ako graduate ng on top of my class. Eh. Because we were talking about social entrepreneurship. Then I said, excuse me, I have presented an international paper in Thailand on... Sabi ko, on social entrepreneurship, I called it blue sky strategy. That's taken from the blue ocean strategy, but I expanded it to the blue sky. And the, the context of that, alam sabi ng professor ko, come on, teach us that. Now he gave me the floor. I'm giving you the floor, the professorial chair for 15 minutes, Carl. Lecture us, school us on the blue sky strategy. Then I, I got it. I mean, you know, ganun lang. So hindi ka pwedeng target tar targeting lang talaga. Okay? And, and and set that rule. Set that rule for your market. Sino tina-target mo? Sino makikinig sa iyo? Yeah. Ayun po. Thank you very much. Do we have any more questions from the floor? Okay, I guess um that's it, no? Or talaga comments? Ano may I, may I get feedback please if if there are no questions? May I get feedback? Yeah, thank you. You're most welcome. But I may get feedback from you. I love feedbacks, by the way. Uh, tell tell me about how you feel now. If I want to, if I may ask, how do you feel now? Uh, how do you feel about um, about this interaction, this conversation? Oh, one last question, though. Sabi ni Carlo Magno, pagbigyan natin, ma'am. Si ma Sir Carlo. Ako mas gusto ko actually nag interact eh. Sige po, sure po, Sir Carlo. Number ko sa Senado, number six po ako for now, pero tentative pa lang. I'm the only teacher running, by the way. I'm the only teacher with a doctorate degree running. I'm the only nurse midwife running. At ako lang po yung totoong micro, small, and medium enterprise champion because that's where I started. Okay. I was thinking of making TikTok. Ano yung tanong ni Sir Carlo Magno? Ah, ito na Ayan. po, sir. Ayan. Yung, so yung, yung case ng isang teacher na nasangkot daw po sa isang social media mess at inimbestigahan ng Department Ed, What is your opinion yeah. regarding this one? 
Yeah, yung, yung lalaki no, na si Pinos niya na pag may magandang dumaan, ganito ang gagawin ko. Uh, kasi number one, ang estudyante kasi niya basic ed. Number one. Number two, naka-uniform siya. Number three, yung caption niya. Pero alam niyo kung sumayaw lang siya, maraming nakitan sa laga sa kanya noon. Kaya lang it's the purpose, it's the meaning of what he posted. Kasi ang context niya noon ay, ako from a teacher standpoint and for someone who's teaching ethics, in in uh, in in uh, foundations of education ang sa akin kasi doon yung context mo yung purpose mo nilagay kasi niya yung may dumaang magandang teach, magandang estudyante tapos ganito ganito sasayawin niya seductive yung ginawa niyang sayaw kasi number one, ang estudyante niya minor number two, naka uniform siya number three, he was in the classroom so that's where the malice would really come in so to me if he did it at home and he was preparing to a kapit bahay or someone else or generally maganda pero magandang estudyante and these are minor so what do you this is corruption of the minor and if the dance was like siguro ko nagtinikling siya doon ay baka pinuri pa siya eh hindi sumayaw siya nung you know sayaw na sexy so i don't want to be very judgmental i don't know all the context of the uh, of of the incident but seeing him in uniform seeing his post referring to students and his dance, which was seductive, I think res ipsa locator, the thing speaks for itself. Uh, he, he deserves to be, he deserved that investigation. But the good thing is he was investigated. I have not followed up on the case. Maybe I should find out kung ano nangyari sa kanya. Maybe a reprimand will do. And that taught a lot of teachers a lesson. That's what's beautiful with investigation. It, and social media, it can teach others and warn others of their responsibility. Thank you, Pa. Ayan po, sir. Um, pahabol lang po, sir. How about um, regarding political views po on social media? Because someone a while ago asked about it. Yeah. Um, in your case po, do you encourage teachers to, um, your teachers to be, you know, open regarding their political beliefs on social media? Yeah. In, in my case, for example, for my, for my own teachers, we're a review center. We're not an, uh, you know, a formal educational institution. Um, but there is, it's part of the, the nonpartisan is covering the ethics of teachers in public school, in fact, in government employees in general. But that doesn't mean that you are not educating the public anymore or you're not taking an advocacy role in the elections. Maybe you cannot show partisan politics, but being political animals that we are, even the school being a political institution like yours and like all the others. Uh, it's not about party, but it's about advocacy for social change. For example, I don't see anything wrong if a te if, 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 at all if the teacher would tell his or her students some criteria on how to choose a president or a senator. You know, but for a teacher to actively campaign uh, for it, uh, that, that's where some uh, taste will have to come in. Like I wouldn't expect a private a public school teacher say vote for Carl Balita but it's okay for that public school teacher to say that Carl Balita is is a teacher without having to say that Carl vote for Carl Balita these are two different things like UST UST is an academic institution it happened to be a uh, Sumasha and I'm the only we're only two senatorial senatorial balls running under UST and UST alumni came up with Carl Balita is a Tomasian. You know, it's an information. You know, when you provide an information or education, it's different from actually influencing them to vote. You know, yun po ang sagot ko doon. So be careful. Look into your, ano, you will all have your handbook, your teacher's handbook. Maybe you can refer to that because every academic institution will have different policies on it. Okay, so thank you. Okay, sa mga thank you, sir. Yes, well, sir. Let me just read some of them, po, no? From Sir Michael um, Helilio. Um, he loves to be involved in social media. However, it's gotten too much of his time, so it eats up yeah. other activities. And hopefully, sir, magkaroon siya ng time for it. Schedule it. Okay, suggestion then, ko ba? Ang suggestion ko don is schedule it. Alam niyo pag gusto may paraan, pag ayaw may dahilan. Uh, ngayon, ngayon po marami akong social media. Alam niyo kung bakit? Eh nandito po, hindi po ako lumalabas kaano. Okay, pero pag po nag-campaign sorti kami, eh baka makita niyo na lang i-picture ko or somebody else will manage it. 
uh, find time uh, kahit once a week para lang wag yung followers mo wag silang uh, wag silang mamatay sayang din naman Ayan po. Thank you, sir. Um, another one po, another comment from Sir Virgilio Soriano. His feedback says he would like to extend his gratitude to you, of course. And your talk actually gives us an impression to look into the importance of contextualizing messages and thoughts, especially when shared in social media. Thank you. And another one po, no, from um, Ma'am De Jesus. More than 30 years teaching and not active in social media, but aware of what is in it. Need to because students are also into it. Thank you po for your additional inputs and interesting insights. So, ayan, yung iba po, sir, no? I'm sure yung iba nag-PM na sa inyo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, thank you. Um, extending mm -hmm. their attitude and, of course, their feedback regarding your talk. And with that po, if you do not have any questions, meron pa po ba tayong questions or feedback from the floor? Ayan, sige. Mukhang wala na po. So, um, yan. Si, if you want to invite again Dr. Carl Balita, he is friends with Sir um, Endix. So, kontakin nyo na lang yeah. si Sir Endix for that. Okay. Ayan po. Um, so, with that, we would like to extend the TBL Hub team would, of course, would like to extend our gratitude to our resource speaker for today, Dr. Carl E. Balita. Let me present the Certificate of Recognition. So, this Certificate of Recognition is awarded to Dr. Carl E. Balita for sharing his valuable time, knowledge, and expertise as speaker and presenter during the Faculty Development and Empowerment Program entitled Social Media Influencer for Educator held on January 12, 2022 via Zoom video conference given on this 12th day of January 2021 at Schaefer Rizal Extension, West Rambo, Makati City, University of Makati. Signed, of course, by the Director of PBL Hub, Dr. Enrico S. Santos, and our OIC University President and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Elixor C. Ramos. Maraming maraming salamat po ulit, Dr. Carl. Yeah, and, and, and finally po, ano, uh, if I may suggest to you, Mac, uh, I think what you have gained today from this talk is something you can spread around like virus. Maybe, if I may suggest, maybe you, Mac, should... Uh, you know, should sponsor so that more educators will be able to hear kinds of, uh, these kinds of conversations. I will be most willing. Uh, kasi pag UMAC ang nag-deliver nito, I'm sure the other uh, local colleges and universities and other institutions of learning will be very interested because I think we should not stop here. We should just build more bridges, uh, more, more connection so that more will benefit from what I prepared for you today. I'll do it better next time. Thank you so much. Salamat. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank po, you. No? So, ayan, sir, before we end, I guess, um, take na tayo ng picture. Sure. <laughs> sir, ayan. So, let me just close first some of my windows. Thank you, para sir. Mas marami po. <laughs> Salamat, ayan. salamat. Thank so, you. I have, I currently have seven pages here with me. So, smile lang po. I'll count one, two, three. Karo tayo lang. One, two, three. <laughs> One, two, three, smile. Ma'am, send mo sa akin ha. Yes po, sure Ayan. doc. I'll send it po. Ayan, so another page po, page two, smile lang po. And while we're taking another, the picture, uh, I'd like to make, make mention po na, you know, as educators, we should find sense in putting an educator in the Senate. Not to campaign, but our educational system is so problematic that we need someone who understands it more than just somebody who listened to people talking about it. Yeah, I know education like like crazy. <laughs> I know the ins and outs of it. So uh, I'm offering myself to you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Maraming maraming Thank salamat you. po, Dr. Balita. Again, that, that was Dr. Carl E. Balita, our last yeah, no. resource speaker for PBL um, Hub. Ayan. <laughs> Sige po. Um, with that, we are now formally closed our faculty um, development and empowerment program from courtesy of course of the TBL Hub team. Doc, um, Doc Endix, meron pa po bang last words? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, Doc Carl, for attending. Uh, palaging speaker namin siya simula nung College of Nursing pa. No? 
that yung time pa ni uh, Dean Evelyn Shabal. So talagang mga mga 19 uh, mga 2003, 2004 pa nag-start ang nursing na andiyan na si Doc Carl sa University of Makati. So thank you Doc Carl for a ano napakahusay ng ano, delivery kahit alam ko napaka-busy niyo po sa campaigning. Uh, nasingit niyo pong gumawa ng mga materials. <laughs> Impressive yung materials niyo. Talagang uh, maganda. And uh, of course, uh, uh, do Carl, ito ay pang 11 series ng webinar namin. Ito yung pinaka-last, the best. No? Okay, thank you. Doc, uh, take it back, Kat. Ayan, maraming maraming salamat po to everyone. Um, for our participants, please do not forget po to, of course, um, fill up our evaluation for today. Ito po, send ko po ulit yung link. Pero na-post naman na po ni Sir, um, Sir Ariel Domingo. Ayan. So, if wala na po question, again, see you guys um, next semester for our next series of Faculty Empowerment and Development Program po. Maraming maraming salamat everyone. Happy lunch po. Thank you po, ma'am. Congratulations. Thank you, po. Thank you Dr. Carl. Thank you, everyone. Salamat. Send me the picture, Miss Kay. Yes, po, Doc. Thank you.